In this lesson, I'll show you how to find the derivative by the delta method. This is question nine. This question is coming from one of our viewers, and they were curious on how to find the derivative by the delta method, or first principles, the definition of a derivative, for this function. Just as a reminder, these are all the functions that we've done so far in this series, so feel free to review them if you need to. So just as before, this is the limit that we want to take, and we want to substitute this expression x plus delta x right into the x part. So for this term, I'll take 1 over the square root of x plus delta x, that's the highlighted part there, minus 1 over the square root of x over delta x. And we need to take the limit as delta x approaches zero. Of course, if I were to substitute zero into delta x, I would end up with over zero, and that's an error. We can't do that. We need to manipulate this a little further. What I will do is multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by the conjugate of the numerator, the conjugate being the same expression except that part is positive. In case that's confusing, let me show you. So it's the exact same thing where instead of minus, it's plus over the square root of x, and the same thing at the bottom. This is a little algebraic technique that you can use to help modify the expression without, of course, changing it. And it does an excellent job, because at this point, we will now multiply these two binomials. That's a binomial, that's a binomial. And we multiply like this, using the distributive law. Starting with this term and that term, when we multiply that term to that term, given that these are the exact same thing and they both have a square root, multiplying them eliminates the square root. So we actually get 1 over x plus delta x. When we multiply this term to that term, we end up with this. Notice I've written it down right here. Now we'll move on to this term and that term. When we multiply them together, you get the same thing, except they're separated with a minus. This means they get eliminated. Let me show you. You see how they're the same thing, except they're separated by a minus. So I'll just eliminate them. No need to continue writing. And then we have 1 over the square root of x times 1 over the square root of x. That becomes minus 1 over x. In case you're confused as to why that loses its square root, just think of it this way. The square root of x times the square root of x is the same thing as x to the power of half times x to the power of half. The exponent laws say that when you multiply with the same base, you add the exponents. So half plus half is 1, x to the power of 1. That's why. At the bottom, not much changes. I'll just multiply delta x into that expression. At this point, don't forget to write down the limit. We can't take the limit right now because we'll still end up with zero. And to make things cleaner, I will remove these from the screen. Ah, that's much better. We will now combine the top, and we combine fractions by multiplying the denominator. That gives us a common denominator. Doing that gives us x plus delta x times x. That's the bottom part. And we cross multiply, where 1 times x is x, and 1 times this is minus Make sure that is in parentheses, because if you don't put it in parentheses, you're telling the reader that only this x is minus, but it's not. So we just combine the top, now the bottom. So multiplying the denominators out, we get the square root of x times the square root of x plus delta x. Do the cross multiply thing just as before. The square root of x plus the square root of x plus delta x. And I'm leaving this outside for now. I should have the limit symbol here as well. I'll multiply delta x into the top part of the fraction here. And at the same time, I'll rewrite this so that I have the division symbol. It just makes things easier for me personally. So I'll write that down here. I'll expand this as well. It will come in handy later. Notice that these two will cancel out. Divided by, after multiplying delta x to the top, I get delta x, the square root of x, plus the 
the square root of x plus delta x and the bottom part remains the way it is. And remember we're taking the limit still. It's a long process. When you divide fractions you reciprocate the second one. So we're going to reciprocate that and change this to multiply. That's how you divide fractions. Here's what you get. Negative delta x over x plus delta x times x times, now this part is at the top and this part is at the bottom. And this will cancel out with this. Remember we still haven't taken the limit yet. If we take the limit now, this was one of the biggest barriers we were having, if we take the limit now, that becomes zero. That becomes zero. That becomes zero. And cleaning this up, we have negative one times the square root of x times the square root of x. That's the top part. No need to write down the limit anymore. x times x is x squared. Times, what do we have left here? The square root of x plus the square root of x. These two multiply together to become negative x. These two combine as this. We can cancel this one with one of those x's. So we have negative 1 over x times 2 times the square root of x. x times the square root of x, which is x to the power of half, is x 3 over 2. And we have negative 1 over 2 at the bottom, the square root of x to the power of 3. That's the answer, although you might not see it as the answer in your book, you might see it written differently because you can rationalize the denominator. You can rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and the bottom by the square root of x. You end up with negative the square root of x at the top, and at the bottom you get 2x because these two multiply together to form x to the power of 4, square root of that is x to the power of 2, you should put a 2 there. So you can either see the answer like this or like that. And there you have it. That is how to find the derivative by the delta method.